Greetings and salutations everybody. Over the next week or so, I've decided I'll be taking an in-depth look at some of the best stealth-related mods for Skyrim, and first on that list is Sneak Tools version 1.0. The author has aimed to enhance the stealth within Skyrim without changing any of the core variables. This is accomplished by adding more depth and options for players when choosing to walk the path of the shadows. I shall start off briefly explaining the MCM menu for this mod. It allows the player to turn on or off various options, such as essential NPC deaths which is something more hardcore Elder Scrolls fans may enjoy, although it can break quests of course, but that's the risk you take. It also allows us to disable any part of the mod we don't like, as well as the ability to add a pop-up menu before performing the actions I'm about to show you. The first new action we gain is the ability to slit the throats of unsuspecting enemies you have managed to creep up to, assuming you have a dagger or a one-handed sword equipped. This is much more satisfying than the original sneak attack and it actually guarantees a kill if the attempt is successful. A successful attempt depends on various factors, such as the level difference, sneak skill of both parties involved, if a helm is being worn and so on. I prefer to keep the MCM pop-up menu on as this allows me to choose between pickpocketing and killing the target. Remember, if selected, essential NPCs can be killed. But if killing isn't your style, how about a restrained knockout blow? The same rules as before apply, but this time you need to use your bare hands or a one-handed mace. Be careful you're not too far away though, as it can be missed. We also get the added bonus of being able to nudge the body when activating it while standing, while you can pickpocket it while crouched. As you can see, it's useful for hiding bodies, although if anyone sees you knock out or touch the unconscious bodies, you will be charged with assault. The NPCs should awaken after 10 minutes of real life time. Now, we all know killing a sleeping target doesn't always work, which can be very frustrating at times. This gives us the option to guarantee a kill by viciously attacking the target three times while they sleep. It doesn't look or sound the most subtle, but it gets the job done. You notice I got caught murdering the Zeme, but not when killing the guards in the barracks, so take this with a grain of salt. Moving on now from the animation takedowns, we get a really cool kick-ass feature, which will be a nice bit of nostalgia for Oblivion fans such as myself. You should remember the Grey Cowl of Nocturnal, which you could use as the identity of the Grey Fox, and get away with crime sprees while wearing it. This dark cowl works in the same way. Be sure to be tactical when using it though, as if an NPC sees you equip it, they will remember you as the wearer, and the mask bounty will be added to your original stat, not the mask itself. You can reset this by not wearing it for 48 in-game hours, and the NPCs will assume it could be someone else wearing the mask now. The same goes for unequipping the mask, and you have to find a secure spot to unmask, as a script smartly checks for several seconds afterwards, so you can't just cheat and break the line of sight just to remove it. The guards and NPCs aren't that stupid. It's also worth noting that while donning a dark cowl, you will be treated with suspicion, and most people won't talk to you, with some small exceptions being guild members, guards and followers. You can also enable an optional ESP that allows certain masks and hoods from the vanilla game to carry the same enchantment if you so wish. Now we're almost getting to the real goodies, for example the ability to extinguish or ignite light sources with spells. This works great and adds further immersion to the game, and it's almost instantaneous in effect. The only fires that don't work are giant campfires, and from a logic standpoint that does kind of make sense. Any lights you alter will also reset within 24 in-game hours. Here's my favourite part, and it's the thief themed arrows. Before I show them, I'll briefly show you the new shop at which we can obtain our cowl and arrow types, that is of course if you don't want to craft them yourself. Using the spell called Shadow's Refuge, which you get when loading the game by the way, will instantly teleport you to Horstar's shop. He's a nord who likes to remain hidden, hence a spell. He also seems to always have a bodyguard with him, or maybe he's just a very regular customer, he looks like an assassin, which is nice. Using the spell again will return you to the same spot as you casted it in originally. Finally, the themed arrows themselves. 
You can really get creative with these if you really want to, and be a pretty successful assassin or thief if mastered. The fire arrows are great for lighting up the sources as mentioned previously, and inflict some fire damage to enemies, although not much, but if they have a fire weakness, why the hell not? They also work perfectly with the oil arrows for setting up traps or generally turning enemies into walking infernos. On the flip side we have our legendary water arrows, which will extinguish light sources upon impact. But if an enemy just won't move, try the noisemakers, which explode into firecrackers on impact, pulling the mobs away to investigate the noise. And the coolest arrow is the last, the rope arrow. You can now traverse new paths into strongholds and totally mix up your approach, whether it be a stealth approach or just something different. You can even jump from rope to rope if you time it right, and they will clear within a 48 hour game period, so don't worry about having too many objects lying around. I'd also like to mention you can get bolt variations of all of these if you have Zidongard installed. As always, I thank you for watching, I hope you liked my review, and I'll see you all next time.